Peter, Brock, James Jones, and Kyle Shipman. <laughs> All right, thank you. My name is Taylor and I have the privilege of working here and to welcome you all for this closing night. So I, I need to recognize key organizations that consistently come together to sponsor the festival and, and to allow us to really to kind of present these 30 days of surf cinema uh, to, to our community. I have to give a, a, the biggest mahalo to our presenting sponsor, Nordstrom, who has consistently stepped up to support this program. Um, just so much gratitude to the whole team there. Also, uh, thank you so much to our major sponsors, Hawaii Life Realty, The Surf Jack, yes. yes surf Jack. The Surf Jack Hotel and Swim Club, and Kona Brewing Company, who are the other contingent there to back us. We always say thank you for keeping us hydrated, and I'm so stoked to have, to have your, your, your beer with us every single year. So thank you so much. Yes, Kona Brewing Company. Certainly not least, our media sponsors, the Surf News Network. Thank you so much to Jerry and the team. I so appreciate you. And Honolulu Magazine, Mahalo Nui. Thank you. Um, and uh, shout out to Men in Gray Suits who provided the awesome music upstairs. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I am so excited to be able to introduce my brilliant colleague, Sarah Fang, who curates the Surf Film Festival the past four years. And so, please join me with the warmest welcome to Sarah Fang. Um, so I'm just gonna go through a few extra thank yous now that we're at the end of our month-long festival run for Honolulu Surf Film Festival 2019. So just a special thank you to the filmmakers who've been present for our festival this year. First off, um, special thank you to director Brent Storm and producer Julie Romano, who came all the way from Canada uh, here for all three screenings of White Rhino. Um, and as well as a special thanks to Cole Christensen, who was here on our opening night, who gave us such um, an insight into the joy and the perils of big wave surfing. He's always been a friend of the festival. Thank you, Cole. Uh, next up, um, on our lineup, uh, we were able to have such lively discussions for both of our Surf Like a Girl screenings, uh, especially with director Elizabeth Pepin Silva and Surf Mama Katie Loggins from introducing the Super Stoked Surf Mamas of Special Thanks. Thanks. Big thanks to them. We're also excited to showcase the more cinematically artistic films like Eels, and we're lucky to be joined by the film's director and producer, all the way from the mainland, Bruce Muller and Burke Roberts. We're here um, yesterday and the day before for their screening, so thank you so much. Well, I mean, one of our biggest priorities is not to only engage our local audience, but also to engage our local sources of talent. Uh, represented in our Surf Cinema Nugs, 
and we're honored to have filmmakers Ben Ono, Naomi Zuno, and Shingo Two represent their respective films during our screenings of the Nugs. And a very, very special thank you um, to uh, this local filmmaker who made his feature Hawaii, who made his um, debut feature and, and it premiered in Hawaii here at our festival. He's also here with us tonight. Thank you, Chris Miyashiro, for sharing that. out for this kid. We're really excited to see what else comes from him. And uh, this year we're also so grateful to have an amazing partnership and collaboration with photographer and filmmaker Zach Noyle. Um, yes. With him we were able to create this open call submission uh, for local talent here in our island home. Um, with the Rising Tide with Zach Noel program. We were so happy that all the filmmakers were able to make it to our screenings of Rising Tide. And I just want to offer another congratulations again to Nolan Omura, who was the winner of our audience choice that night. Oh, nice. um, with that then, let's get to the festival awards. Um, this year, again, we have the Audience Choice Short and Feature Awards, along with our first ever Curator's Choice Award, uh, which was chosen by a jury that included Zach Noel, along with surfer filmmaker Crystal thornberg Holmesy. And now, here to present our first award of the evening, please join me in giving a warm welcome to Crystal thornberg Holmesy. And those who did it but dreamt of it. <laughs> Yay! Okay, it seems like everyone has a connection of the ocean here. And I'm so honored to be asked for the second year in a row to be part of the Curator's uh, Choice Award. Because over the last, I'd say, two or three months, we've been watching maybe 50 films for, from around the world. And, and I am really beyond honored to present the award this year to Trouble, the Lisa Anderson story. And it was directed by Chaz Smith. Chaz wrote a um, little message. He wasn't able to be here today, but he wanted to tell everyone that being able to tell Lisa's story was an incredible honor and having it resonate and the birthplace of our pastime of kings makes me happier than anything. Mahalo Honolulu. If you guys haven't seen this film, it is beautiful. I love the way they incorporate old archival film and Lisa's story about coming into her world title. It's truly uh, inspiring. And we'll have a little message from Lisa. She couldn't be here today, but she wanted to send her love and thanks. I wanted to say thank you so much for the, the opportunity to be in the film festival and um, just feel like it's super important to tell these stories so everyone learns the history and um, you know just uh, tells a story. Stories are important in surfing so I'm so honored to be part of it and thank you so much for the acknowledgement and uh, I look forward to seeing you guys all pretty soon. Thank you. Thank you so much. That. Um, and so now I have the honor of presenting our Audience <laughs> Choice Award, the uh, winner of the Audience Choice for Best Short at this year's Honolulu Surf Film Festival is Surf Girls Jamaica. <laughs> amazing story about the ocean and what surfing does to young girls and about representation in surfing media and how important it is to our future generations. So congratulations to Joya Barrow and the team of Surf Girls Jamaica. And now I am excited to introduce, um, for to present our final award of the night, the Audience Choice, the, uh, the audience choice feature. Uh, please join me in giving a very, very warm welcome to someone who's been one of the most amazing partners we've had for this festival for this festival for the past few years. Please join me in giving a warm welcome to Anna Trent Moore. Well, it's my great honor to present this award this evening 
for the Audience Choice Speaker Award. And with great pleasure, it was White Rhino Film by Brad Storm. And he could not be here this evening, but I'm privileged to share his words on his behalf, and he has to say, on behalf of the White Rhino team, we are so honored to have won such an amazing award in such an incredible festival. We wouldn't be happier with the crowd energy during all these three screenings, and it means the world to us that our audience enjoyed the adventure that the film brings to the big screen. To be included in this incredible event was an absolute honor, let alone receiving the audience choice of the world. We want to extend a huge thank you to the program coordinator, Sarah Fang, and her team for such a well-organized and incredibly fun event. We look forward to being a part of the Honolulu Surf Film Festival for many years to come. Aloha. Aloha. Mahalo for being here this evening. I'd like to acknowledge the Honolulu Museum of Art for having us once again. Taylor Chang, the director of films. Sarah Fang, who pieced together another amazing festival. Manette Ferrer for being an invaluable assistant. And our special guests who join us on stage following the feature film of Gun Ho. Let's give it up for Derek Dorner. Joey Cabell, Bob Sutherland, Dark Abbey, Peter Cole, and Mr. Joe Quinn. I'd also like to give a mahalo to my good friend Kyle Metcalf. This is our 10th year. And he has been here every year filming and documenting every show that we have And last but not least, our greatest love and mahalo to the man of the evening, Mr. Kimo Hollinger. <laughs> Martin Luther King once said, we are not makers of history, we are made of history. What we are today is possible because of what was given yesterday. And so there are times when I ask myself, what is our role, our giving in this one precious life that each of us have. Because we do have a choice in what we decide to give ourselves to, our best to, and what we deem most worthy to uphold as something of value. This is our 10th year coming to the Honolulu Festival, and each time that we have come, I am overwhelmed grateful to be in the presence of each one of you here. Because in the time of your day, this evening, I like to believe that you have come because there is something of value that inspires your presence. I have heard from some that we now live in a time where history may have lost some relevance. I disagree. But if there is any inkling of truth to it, I cannot be concerned. Because I do believe there will always be those like each of you here tonight that will treasure the footprints planted by those before us. And ultimately, what we treasure is what becomes truly lasting. And so tonight, we are here to treasure one of ours, one of our own, 
whose footprints we honor, our beloved Kimo Hollinger. <laughs> story, I don't need to remind you what a memorable experience that can be. <coughs> Storytelling was passed down to him as a young child when he began listening to his elders. He was a quiet listener, a trait that would develop him into the captivating storyteller we all know him to be. Speaking softly, slowly, with great deliberation, he will hold you anxiously waiting for what he wishes to reveal. There's a tenderness in his telling which softens the reader to what is perceived as vulnerability. And then, when one fears, it will be a moment where he might suddenly lose it. Unexpectedly, he will delight us by delivering a punchline so seamless, you're not sure if you've been toyed with. <laughs> or he's being completely serious. <laughs> but he is always being completely serious. Because hidden between the bursts of laughter, the folds of humor are always two things, truth and wisdom. Born in 1939, Kimo's father, Henry Chubby Hollinger, was a fireman, and his mother, Dutchie Hollinger, was a musician. Living in Kapahulu, it seemed only natural that his parents served tandem together in Waikiki. And natural, too, that he would gravitate to the ocean. He began surfing at a young age on an old redwood surfboard that his uncle had given him. Ten feet tall and thick as a tree, it was so heavy that Kimo could barely carry it to the water, but thus began his journey as a surfer. One of my most favorite images of Kimo surfing was taken by Bud Brown. It's not a giant wave like the one he's known for charging on the North Shore but rather it's a small one, and it is of Makaha. Ooh. Ooh. Poised on the nose of his board, elbows bent at the waist, both hands softly gestured forward, he looks like a surfer from an ancient time. And maybe it is, because he is. <laughs> 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 because the ancient sport of surfing does run through Kimo's veins, carrying the history of a sport which we love, which we cherish, which we value. And so tonight, Kimo Hollinger, we honor you. We honor you for reminding us what we are made of. Mahalo, mahalo. <laughs> Bud loved it, I loved it, and I know you loved it too. So come up here and get that picture we love. Even at this age, Kimo Hollinger has not lost that understated sense of humor and the twinkle in his eye that he always had. Uh, my family was from uh, Kapoholo, the Hollinger family, and my brother had, my, 
My father had uh, nine brothers, and uh, there were six Hollingers that served. And uh, my father, he courted my mother by by taking her uh, surfing tandem at Waikiki. So then I came along. Uh, <laughs> And uh, when, when, when he felt I could take care of myself, he sent me down to, uh, to Waikiki to be with my Uncle John. And he taught me how to serve my Uncle John. And uh, in 1958, uh, the, the big waves that uh, Uncle George then caught, uh, Paul Dibar and I got in on it on the second day. So when I got home, I told my mother, I said, Mom, I surfed the big waves. And she said, you stupid ass. <laughs> and, and, and anyway, I'd like to say that uh, Uh, I don't know if you guys are uh, familiar with Clark Abbey, and he is also a Hollinger, so the Hollingers are still serving. Thanks, sir. I just wanted to say that when the surfing season was piled and Bud was going, was leaving, so I told him. What, bro? You going back to California? He said, no, I'm going to Tahiti. <laughs> yeah, then he smiled. <laughs> 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 and a very good friend of his is, host, is uh, Kimo, and I'd like to have Kimo say a few words about Jose, about um, Butchie. Yeah, uh, Like Chubby, Ch Chubby was like my older brother, and then uh, Butch was my younger brother, and uh, I got a lot of heat. But when Butch came, then you know I passed it on to him. So, you know. <laughs> but he, he was, as you can see in the movie, he was such a great guy, so full of life. And uh, everybody liked him. And uh, being a guy from California, he had so many local friends, you know, uh, um, male and female. <laughs> uh, it was very sad what we had to see him go, but the. That's what he wanted to do, and and, and we have to uh, stand by what he did. But my family, we just love the guy, and, and uh, I, I, you know, you see how what a fantastic surfer he was. And what a good friend he was. And uh, I, I just want to tell you people that he, he was one of a kind. Thank you very much. Maybe Kimo could say a few things about memories about Paul Gabbard, because he was a real classic. He is a classic. He's still around. Uh, I think he's up there in the crater somewhere up in Hawaii. <laughs> Here's, uh, here's Kimo. Uh, uh, people know where to uh, find me. Uh, when you're a fireman, they don't go to your house, they come to the fire station. And uh, when Paul would come to uh, Oahu from Maui, he'd come and see me at the fire station. I remember once he, uh, he, he gave me a a good jazz album. Uh, he was going to come 
he was going to come here to see us, but uh, he's under the, the care of a doctor in Maui, and uh, uh, he couldn't. The, the doctor wouldn't let him go to come here. His his father was the head uh, doctor at uh, uh, at the. Uh uh, place Lea. near, uh, near, yeah, Lea. 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 Leahi, Leahi Hospital. Yeah, the, uh, his father, uh, Dr. Gibar, yes. And uh, Paul, Paul was just a, he, he was, he was a real wit, and uh, he, he didn't hold back. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm sure all of us here got angry at him at one time or another. But, uh, you know, here in Hawaii, we tease each other, but we love each other, you know, and uh, I hope we can always keep it that way, where, you know, no one really gets hurt. Thank you. And I contend that that's face value stuff is all garbage. Uh, we never measured the back of the wave, we just simply measured the number of bodies that went up the face and uh, I, think, I think people like to embellish and make themselves look good by making the waves a lot bigger than they really are. I don't know, I'm going to ask Kimo what he thinks. Uh, the kids are not in bigger waves uh, than we did, you know, they have uh, better equipment, uh, they have uh, more safety features, uh, and uh, I think they're better athletes. They're you know they're they're able to uh, concentrate just on surfing because uh, they're sponsored, and uh, you know it's the, when they get old, another group would come up and be better than them, but. Right now, they're better than, than we were. Oh, I hope they are. Great dad. So let's all say thank you to Brett Brown. Uh, I, I always broke my boards, so I had to bomb boards, you know, from people. So uh, I bumped bump Doyle's board, so Doyle let me use his board, and I, I went out surfing at uh, Waimea, and uh, this guy patted out and said, hey, Doyle wants his board back. <laughs> so I said, okay, so what was I going to do now? So I went, out, I went out on the point, and I harassed uh, Bud. Hey, Bud. <laughs> Your helper's here. Oh, Kimmy, you better behave yourself now. And, uh, you know, I kicked the, what they call that, the transom or something. Yeah, I kick it and then he got mad at me. But he was such a nice guy that, you know, he would never remain mad at you. Uh, he, he was a very unique person. Uh, you, you, you know, uh, I just want to tell you folks that uh, my family been surfing a hundred years and uh, that we lost one of our own, that uh, my, my first cousin, uh, uh, Fred Hollinger, he, he, he broke his neck at Sandy Beach. And uh, they put him on life support, and I went in and saw him, and he gave me a smile, one surfer to another surfer. Thank you very much. Sure. What, what inspired each of you to finally say, I think I can do this. I think I can get out there and beat that wave. The older guys. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The guys that came first before us, like Duke Anamoku, you know, and, no, the guys that came before. When you out there, I mean, that's got to be awesome to get out there and to 
get on that wave. And I, I just can't imagine. You know, what, what was your awe inspiring moment? And said, I can do this. I can beat this. <laughs> Everybody, that's my wife. <laughs> I guess I was just born into surfing, but uh, I want to apologize for when I was younger. I was a big time hog, <laughs> but now that I'm old, I'm lucky to catch three waves, and I'm so thankful for those three waves. <laughs> and of course, chemo. Uh, remember that wipeout at Waimea, chemo? <laughs> but you, you know what Fuzzy said? He said, this is like two days now before um, he had a fall and was taken to the hospital and it turned out he had stage four lung cancer and he died two days later. But, but he said to me two days before he passed away, Ricky, be grateful. Be grateful. So that's what I pass on to all of you. Let's all be grateful. So, so uh, Timo, would you like to say something? Uh, 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 Bauer and I uh, we crashed the party that uh, Rick and his friends were having at uh, Cabela Bay, and then uh, Rick Rick must have just come back from Tahiti because. Uh, he was doing the tamure. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, Rick was really a, a good, a good Tahitian dancer. <laughs> and uh, uh, Peter, Peter and Fred didn't mind the pigeon, but. Ricky didn't like us talking all that pigeon, and then Paul and I were talking pigeon, and then these two cute Holly girls came, and then we ditched that and went to our Punahou English. <laughs> so then, at the end of the party, then Rick said, he, he winked at me and he said, Gee, Kimo, I didn't know you know how to speak English. <laughs> and I thought to myself, I said, Hey, man. You're ragging on me. How about you chasing all those pretty Oriental girls? <laughs> <laughs> and then another time, uh, we, we were going to surf Waimea. It was beautiful. You know, the, the waves were big and thin, and we could catch them. And then these guys on this boat came out. And they told us we couldn't surf because there was going to be a contest. So I, I was stunned, you know, that they wouldn't let us surf. And uh, Jose, Jose almost got into it with the guys on the boat. But because I was, I worked for the county. Uh, I was a fireman. I figured I'd get in more trouble. <laughs> if I try to do something like that. So I just paddled way out and I just sat there and sulked. <laughs> and then the contest started and here comes Ricky. He's coming back on I, I thought we weren't going to surf, but he had designated himself to be the, the contest lifeguard. <laughs> and he was catching on the waves. <laughs> This is, this, is, this is the last one, the third one. I, we, we, my friends and I were surfing outside uh, Wailua, and I caught a wave, and when I get off the wave, this whale breached, and it was a, it was a killer whale, it was an orca, because my daughter lives in San Diego, and she took me to SeaWorld to see Shamu. So I knew it was a, I knew it was an orca. So when I paddled out, I saw all those guys, hey man, I saw an orca, I breached. And you know, they said, nah, they, they didn't believe me. And then I looked far, far out, 
And I saw the big mama whale going and the little baby whale right behind. So I figured to myself, that's why the orcas are there, you know, to get the baby whale. And I was excited. When I went home, I was still excited. So I looked in the phone book and, and I got Rick's number and I called him. And he said, and you know, he kind of looked uh, like Professor Gray. <laughs> Kimo, that's impossible. <laughs> it would be more likely that, that that would happen than if you woke up early in the morning and found an elephant in your backyard. <laughs> Kimo, what's your thoughts? Uh, we didn't get paid nothing. That's how they support their families, by riding those waves, you know. And, uh, you know, all, I hope the best for all, for all of those guys, you know, they deserve it. It was fun to watch, see these guys, uh, younger than us, uh, doing so well and, and so enjoyable, you know. So that was a fun time. Uh, I was raised in Pearl City and uh, we used to rule Barbara's Point. <laughs> now, there's so many chicks out there surfing that they're ruling. <laughs> you have these different generations, different idols, different this, different that, but I think the surfing is the same now as it was then, it's just more people. More lineups, more, more technology, more everything. But it's still a camaraderie. You're out in the lineup, you still have that same camaraderie that we had in the old days. And I just think it's, it's just population increase. I surfed with Ricky about 15 years. He never gave me a wave. <laughs> And how he did it. It, it, it was just, it was just profound. It, it, you know, he he faced he faced some hard things, but he always had a smile. You know, and uh, to me, he was a he was very brave. Thank you. I really. Uh uh, I give Ricky a bad time. I'm still giving him a bad time, but I really uh, had a tremendous respect for him, and he was a very, very close friend. He was like a brother to me. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, he ate one. He ate one time a day, <laughs> and uh, it was it was heavy. It was like you, you know, like speeding up a, a, a film. <laughs> It, it was really funny, you know. But I, I want to say that uh, uh, us local guys and the guys from the mainland, we all ended up getting along with each other. And we all became fast friends. And that is Aloha. Aww. I was a fireman. Then the boss would say, how'd you guys do? We saved the real estate, boss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I heard about Kimo having um, uh, the, some specific ideas. It might have been better to fight a fire with some of the guys from the city, you know. There's some of the other chiefs, they have different ideas, and so there was a little bit of head fighting. <laughs> <laughs> but, and my favorite was to call Colleen Harlow, and she said, well, you know, I don't know how many feet it is. And I go, well, how many refrigerators is it? And she said, well, it's probably two or three refrigerators, and I knew how high a refrigerator was. And it was amazing. Her estimates were by far the most accurate. Uh, I went to Punalo School. I was on a, a scholarship a little bit. But uh, 
because I didn't fulfill what they wanted me to do. They always says, you went to Punahou School and you're, and you're just a fireman. What did you do? Go to school to eat lunch? And you know what? That's true. <laughs> because they had me working in the kids' cafeteria and then they put me where, with, the, with the teacher's cafeteria and it was just like I was in heaven. <laughs> And it, it got, I ate so much that I couldn't go to the next, the class for the next period. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think Timo still serves. Yeah, I still serve, but small waves. <laughs> <laughs> That's not entirely true. You can consider, you know, double overhead small than that. <laughs> I can attest to, uh, it's a good thing Peter stopped surfing because he ran, he ran over to me at sunset. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, Doug on Randy cut my way. <laughs> you know, he doesn't seem to understand that the guy paddling out does not have the right of way. The guy riding the way has the right of way. Well, it looks like we're all ready to probably call it a night. It's been a long night. I noticed that people have had to leave because it was getting past their bedtime. It's past my bedtime. It's past Timo's bedtime. I don't know about Jack. These young guys stay up later than we do. And thank you so much, and I just want to say it's been a real And now, it's always my pleasure to welcome to the stage some of the people that you've seen in the films or you've heard the stories about who lived and to tell the tale, sing the praises of Kimo Hollinger. Welcome to the stage, one of Kimo's oldest and dearest friends from the North Shore, Mr. Peter Cole. <laughs> he has often been called the complete surfer. And I think he is the complete waterman. Mr. Joey Cabell. And our youngster on the panel this evening, Kimo's nephew, big wave rider and surfboard shaper, Clark Abbey. We all know him, admire him, maybe try to surf like him. North Shore legend, surfer, surfer, jocks everyone. We know him as the double D. He's also the big wave charger, tow-in pioneer, Mr. Derek Dorner. And if he would like to join us, we would be overjoyed. And if he wants to just sit and listen, we'd still be overjoyed because we are just in awe to be in his presence. One of surfing's greatest legendary shapers of the great men and women who ride the waves. Mr. Joe Quigg. <laughs> he was the voice of the evening and the voice of many of Bud Brown's films. <clears throat> and more importantly, Bud did things based on friendship. And he was one of the dearest, dearest friends. So I'd like to start the evening out and hand it over to these gentlemen on stage, beginning with Mr. Peter Cole. I was really enjoyed seeing all my old friends here. And uh, I want to say the one thing about surfing that I always think of is not just riding waves, but the camaraderie you have over the years. It's just unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And Kimo Hollinger is, was a classic. And I have to say, when I first came to the islands, I, had, I bought this book, book, this car. There was a kindergarten association van. And it was, uh, I bought it from, uh, I bought it from Fred Van Dyke for about $75. <laughs> And I remember going out to the North Shore with Kimo Hollinger and Paul Gabauer 
and it was a very entertaining trip. I'll tell you, Gabar had the best pigeon English of any, anybody that I could think of, and Kimo was just a classic, humorous, wonderful person. And we used to have, I used to really enjoy those two, and I'm sorry that, that we don't have Kim, uh, Gabawa here because he was a classic, and he was probably one of Kimo's closest friends. But I just want to say that this is a wonderful group to see all the, my old friends here. And I just have to say, surfing is fabulous, but the real good thing about it is the camaraderie you develop over the years. <laughs> I don't know what else we can say, but let me tell you about this group here. You can't, you can't believe how good a surfer Joey Cabello is. You know? <laughs> wonderful surfer. Josh Southern, you can't believe how good he was. But the guy that I really respect, and I, he made a 10-6 three-stringer board that I used for the first 10 years of in the island. It was a semi-gun, and I rode nothing but that board, and I got some of my best surfing with it, and that was Joe Quigg. I'm honored to be here. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm in the midst of the, some of the greatest watermen in, in history from the earliest days to probably today. Anyway, thank you very much for inviting me on the stage. Uh, this is a man that I remember we did a competition together, a swim, a paddle at yeah. Makaha. Remember that? Yeah, yes. Yeah. You were the swimmer, I was a paddler, and uh, you know, what happened? Remember? I think we won. Didn't yeah, we. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we all go back, and we all connect one way or another. This this is another man here that we were very close to. His father, in particular, we made uh, coconut hats and uh, Waikiki in the late forties or no fifties, late forties early fifties. So and and your father came to California when uh, I invited him to come to California, we're going to surf, we're going to check out what's going on. Anyway, we had a lot of camaraderie during those days. And of course, Jack Sullivan, come on, Jack. He's the man. I joined. <laughs> He's the man. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. And your ability to go back in the tune every other way. Wow. And now we have Joe Quinn. Joe. There he is. <laughs> we go back, and Joe was a creator of so many good things. Uh, probably one of the things I still have is my catamaran, Hokulea, that Joe created, and uh, I helped him build it. But he was the man, without a doubt, that made the boat an incredible boat. So we used it a lot. I'm still used using it. We had a fast time in Tahiti, nine and a half days in Tahiti, uh, which is fast for that period. And so we uh, have a lot in common about the, the, the catamaran and the, and the sailing and the lifestyle of that period. So, Joe, mahalo. <laughs> Thank you for your participation in my life. I couldn't have done it without you. Mahalo. We gotta go with Kimo Hollinger because uh, he's the man of the evening. And uh, we rode lots of waves together, spent lots of time, and I always admired his, uh, his smooth and classic style. He came to California, he was uh, there at the, in the surfboard shops in the early days in California, and we surfed all those local breaks in uh, Southern California. So Kimo was, uh, without a doubt, the, the man of the, the night, the man of the period, and the man with the personality, man with the humor, Kimo, we love you, God. Mahalo.
Uh, I just want to thank everybody for uh, having me here. It's, um, it's an honor to uh, sit here with these guys over here that I kind of grew up watching surf all my life. And uh, my, actually, my mother is uh, first cousins with Uncle Kimo. Uh, their fathers were brothers, and they grew up surfing uh, in the turn of the century back on wooden surfboards. Um, there's a whole bunch of brothers that did that, and uh, Uncle Kim was a prodigy of these guys, you know, and I guess in the late 50s and 60s, he came into his own, and, you know, in the Abbey household, it was all about surfing in the 60s, and uh, there were surfing magazines that filled the house, and on top of them was Kim Hollinger, so he was, yeah, he was our idol. We, we looked up to him. Um, and my mother was real close to him too, you know. Um, my, my mother married a surfer and uh, she paddled and uh, Uncle Kimo paddled too. Uh, in 1965, uh, she named my younger brother after Uncle Kimo. His name is Hollinger Kimo Abbey. Hollinger Kimo Abbey. So anyway, um, we watched him throughout the years and just idolized him and uh, we wanted to be just like him and uh, both me and my twin brother Alex we wanted to surf Waimea Bay you know and that's all we wanted to do um, but it wasn't easy because uh, you know it was pretty tough out there you know the waves were big and it was not that crowded but these guys were older than me you know and so when I got into the lineup in 1980 my end was I'm Kimo Hanger's nephew. <laughs> Somehow, some guy let me in the lineup, you know? Uh, guys like James Jones and Rio Aguilera, uh, Keone Downing. Uh, apparently, when Kiwi, you touch not just your generation, you touch the next generation. And I was the generation right below that, so I was kind of reaping the benefits of what you did. <laughs> yeah, so, um, you know, and, uh, it, it happened that uh, James Jones really embraced me. You know, and he made me boards, and it was, I think I talked to him about it a little later, and he said it was because of you. You was his hero. You were some of those guys' heroes. Okay. Eddie Aikau, all those guys, they looked up to you. And Peter Cole, you know, Joey Cabello, Macaw, I never forget that one barefoot adventure. Uh, that was awesome. Going to the bowl. Uh, so even after you left one man, you perpetuated your big wave surfing by writing articles, you kind of put us right there, you know, all the language, all the terminology that you used, um, and not just surfing magazine, but uh, in um, surfers journal. Um, so uh, you perpetuated the sport at the beginning, even to today, for generations to come. So thank you for the inspiration. Um, I love you, and uh, I'll never forget what you did for me. I love you, Kimo. It's been my, my pleasure to have grown up here in Hawaii after my dad brought us here in 52. He was a surfer and he had an old board that was like 14 feet long. And uh, that, those didn't have fins in those days, probably. You didn't need them because they were so heavy, they just plopped through the water. <laughs> couldn't turn them hardly at all, but my dad had the good fortune of meeting up with Tom Blake over here, and Tom sawed off like three or four feet of this monster board and put a fin on it, which made it a little bit easier. But uh, I was so lucky because mom and dad were, were already kind of known by some California surfers who started coming over from Cobb. And when I got to be, you know, 10, 12 years old and started surfing um, more steadily that I was able to meet people like Joe and uh, Joe Quick here and Joy Cabell and, as well as Kimo later on growing up on the North Shore and uh, these were guys that we like to emulate, Paul, Paul Strau to some extent, the California guys like Phil Edwards, but they, they would come to Macaw, uh, from Macaw st starting to surf the North Shore back in the 50s and they would stop by my mom and dad's, mom and dad's house, and and uh, they would, uh, you know, check me out and go, oh, you know, this is a this is a kid here. Maybe we can look after him later on when he starts to surf big waves, which is what they did, Fuzzy and uh, 
and, and Greg, as well as uh, George and, and Wally, these, these fellows, uh, I was so lucky to have their, their influence and, and try to copy their, their style as well as their, their graciousness, not only in the water, but out. And later on, when um, these fellows started to not surf the waves so much, uh, we still would see them around town, like uh, Kimo and his old battered uh, pickup. And uh, Charlie Smith and I, you know, would, would uh, very much enjoy seeing his company and try to take him some dried aqua or poi or whatever we had to try to curry favor with him, you know, so that uh, we could hear some of the good old stories. But uh, yeah, it's it's great to grow up here in Hawaii because of the the, the feeling of a uh, family from not only the older surfers but a lot of the younger surfers, fortunately, are, are able to see the, the value in, in, the, in the, 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 the pioneering efforts that were made by not only the California guys, but uh, mainly, you know, the, the Hawaiian surfers like you know, John Kelly and Paul, the rest of cocky people like that, John Lynn. But uh, I want to express my gratitude to Kimo for, for carrying on those old traditions and even to people like Clark here that I've just known over the past 10 or 15 years and who I admire very much as a paddler and a big wave surfer. Have you quit surfing? Did some people say you quit surfing one minute or something? I'm the Okay, well, there we go, there we go. Yeah, it's, it, it's, yeah good, good deal. I hope to see you out there. But um, uh, I'd like to turn over the, the stage here to Joe. Joe, you have a couple words to say here. Is this the same, the same word? Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'd like to say, uh, I think I'm probably the oldest of the bunch here. And uh, my, I, I've uh, lived in Santa Monica uh, on the uh, early years. And uh, my mom was a swimmer, and, and she'd take me down to the beach when I was three or four years old. And uh, that was almost a hundred years ago. <laughs> she, I'd go out there when I was a little boy, and uh, I had a little handboard, and. Uh, and I'd jump into these shore breaks and ride them. And, uh, that was a long time ago. And, uh, uh, later on, I got to riding a surfboard, and I got to hanging out at Malibu. And is this? Me? Oh, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I got a surf shop going and built thousands of boards and uh, one of the unique things that happened was uh, a girl came to me and uh, asked me to build her a board, a uh, surfboard, and there weren't many girls riding in those days. and. Uh, so I, I built her a board, and I said, I'll build you a board that you just catch the first wave and ride it all the way to the beach. And uh, I made her the first foam surfboard, uh, the first board to be made out of bubbles of plastic called foam. And, uh, which later became one of the largest ways of manufacturing boards. And uh, was that a chip board, Joe? No. Chip, that, no, no. It was a it, it was a chemical yeah, yeah. plastic bubbles. Yeah, yeah. Like poly polyethylene or something like. That. So I went on into a surfboard business later, and. Uh, Build a lot of surfboards. Do what? 
Better? Took her board down, and I told her, "If you, this board is going to be a new revolution, and it's going to, and and you, it, it'll, it's so light and easy to ride that." You see, men, the 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 men in those days were riding, still riding redwood boards and heavy, real heavy boards and. Uh, Other guys tried to ride that girl's board, right? <laughs> well, well, that's what happened. Uh, the, the girls started buying these boards from me, and uh, they'd go out and they got to doing real good at Malibu. And uh, hey, Joe. Hey. circles around the men, even because the men were still on their heavy boards. <laughs> So, all you girls out there, uh, Thank you, Joe. Can, can, Joe, can you help us with the mic a little bit, please, Jocko? And we want to hear every word you're saying. So I think, Joe, is it true that the girls really help you? Designed the shorter surfboard. The girls. Was it the girls? No, no. I, I, I came up with this one particular girl. <laughs> it was a different kind of board. Ah. It, it was very light. It was half the weight. And, and uh, who was that girl, Joe? Do you Pardon? remember? Who was that girl? The girl. Yeah. Remember her? I It was almost a hundred years ago. So the the mines abandoned their heavy boards and and all got these light foam boards and swept the world. And, uh, That's true. And, uh, yeah. I got to be a real, real good body surfer. And there's a beach called a wedge in California, and I got real good at the wedge and. And I really love body surfing too. Uh, and How about pipe board, Joe? Pipe board is kind of fun. Yeah. Body board. Yeah. Oh, body board, sure. Yeah. So I get the so there, yeah, there are several sports within sports, and uh, that ocean is a wonderful place. <laughs>
most of all, I want to thank Kimo for teaching us to love everybody, to back everybody, and to keep surfing and be happy. And let's give him a hand, everybody. stuff is just jumping to I don't know, you know, that's the real thing, man. Yeah. Well, I want to thank all of you for being here this evening. Um, it's always a pleasure to be here in this building the Holland Museum of Art, which treasures, honors history, and the fine job that Taylor and Sarah and Manette do, bringing the stories together, celebrating our people, our wave riders. It's always something that is a gem in Honolulu. I don't think, we, we go to different places and show films, but I always think that this is the gem of them all. So thank you all for coming, and thank you, gentlemen. God bless you, so much.